Here you are, sir. All right. Welcome to our, our uh, live stream. Uh, we'll just bow in in one second. I need my timer thing, Flu. Perfect. Ready? Two. All right, starting off nice and easily, we're going to start off with just movement. Okay, so right away, you start off in your spine stance, you're just going to float forward and back. And then you're going to change direction, forward and back the other way. So I'm just popping, bouncing off my ankles, going to the left, shift going to the right. Remember, I'm actually moving both feet. Switch, other way. Switch. Good, jumping jacks. Get your shoulders awake. Jumping jacks crisscrossing your feet. Jumping jacks shuffling your feet forward and back. Good, good, good. Arm circles through jumping jacks you're shuffling. Make sure they're not little circles. Pull your shoulders. Do the sense you can do this. Pull your shoulders back. So as you're shuffling, pull those shoulders all the way back. Good, other direction. Good. From here, slow squat. Just wake up the knee, get raised to the bottom. You're gonna rock in a circle. Power back up and jump. And then again, down low, rock in the other circle. What I'm trying to do is roll around a circle on my ankles. Jump up, bounce, bounce. Last time, down. Rock in a circle. Rock in the other circle, jump up, and ready. Okay, starting off, what we're going to do is we're just move and jab. I float and I stick my jab up. Remember, as I jab, a jab is not slow. It's a lightning bolt. So it's boom, boom. There's not a whole bunch of movement. As I jab, my good stance is just boom. Stick it out, yank it back. Just jab and move, and go. So it's just jab and move. Jab and move, jab and move. Make sure you snap it up fast and pull it back fast. Just wind the hands up. So it's here, not here. Elbows tucked in, hands up. Good and strong. Just that jump. Snap it out. Good. Shuffle your feet. Okay, so now we're gonna make we're gonna add something. The next one is two. Just your cross. Actually, let's do it with a hook instead. Here, lead hook. So it's left arm, hand vertical, boom. Hook, move, hook. Move, hook, move, boom. Right, that hook, remember that hook is your body. This isn't a hook, this is an arm. Load, drive. That's a hook where I use my whole way, boom. So I'm not trying to tap them. I'm trying to go through them. Shift, hook. Shift, hook. And you notice I tilt a little bit. I don't want to hook from neutral. I angle my body slightly, almost like I throw it across, boom. And I load that hook. When you notice I'm still floating. Good. From here, right into a front plank. Two boots, hands flat. Put your hands on the ground. Make sure you're not here. Your hands should be directly under your shoulders. Your thumbs should be straight under your shoulders. Okay, but you should be holding your arms up. So this is above my shoulders, this is flat. I'm gonna put my chest over my thumbs. Squeeze your tummy and be solid. Nice and solid. 
Lift one toe and wiggle it, put it down. Lift the other toe and wiggle it, put it down. But as you do that, don't do a big motion. Barely lift it. Wiggle, wiggle. Lift, wiggle, wiggle. Good. And back up. And relax for shot break. Your ability to move is super important. A lot of us like to stand still. But if I'm standing still, a bad guy can get me. So my ability to the distance super important. All right. Oh, I missed something. My apologies. Okay. So now, we're going to take that jab of ours. Jab. And then we're going to tilt hook. So it's both our left hand. Jab, tilt, hook. Left jab, left hook. Left jab, left hook. And then float. Left jab, left hook. Left jab, left hook. Jab, hook. Jab, shift, boom. And you'll know, I put a lot of weight into this hook. I'm jabbing for distance. Jab, to. So the hook, the jab is meant to go underneath. The hook is meant to do damage. Distract, slip, hammer. Nice and smooth. It should be time to train right now. Now you may shuffle. Okay, so the next one is an uppercut with your back arm. So in our stance, it should be your right arm, uppercut. And again, we're gonna move, uppercut, move, uppercut. Now as I throw my uppercut, look how far away from my face it is, okay? If you uppercut, and it's right up to your chin, then you're able to lick them. If my uppercut's here, I would be this close to them. I wanna be far enough away that I can hit them, but I'm gonna kiss them. So it's just uppercut, shift, uppercut. And again, the foot, <laughs> And explode that uppercut. So it's boom, snap it up. Boom. Float, uppercut. Uppercut. All right. Quickly doing a side break ball to get on your back. Just normal sit-ups. A thousand to do. That's totally not true. We have about 45 seconds of sit-ups. Nice and easy. All right, get ready, stand up. Now we're going to put all three together. So we're Jab, same arm hook, uppercut, jab, hook, uppercut, left jab, left hook, right uppercut. So the look, one, four, two, three. <laughs> That's it. One, two, three, move. One, two, three, move. One, little circle. Two, three, move. One, two, three, move. Good, and rest. Your rest is moving, by the way. Rest isn't. Uh, Rest is moving. It's active recovery. Now the next one, if I'm here, I'm going to switch my feet and do a knee. So if your left leg is in front, you switch your feet and throw a left knee. Switch. Right? So if I'm here, switch. Switch knee. Switch, and what I do is I do, treat it like a stomp. I switch and I stomp forward with it. And that noise is me breathing out as I drive out. It's not just lift your knee, it's push really hard. 
Switch, boom. All right, from here, hold your squat all the way down, stick your arms out, and then you're gonna try and lift straight above your head, straight down to the ground. You gotta keep your heels on the ground. Lift your arms straight up, arms down. Just I'll try one at a time. Scissor your arms. Stay sitting in your squat. I try to get that arm way up. I don't have very flexible shoulders, so it's very hard for you. You guys should be able to get almost straight up. So you're scissoring your arms. Hi, they wave at each other as they pass. One finger touches the ground, the other hand reaches up. Good, pop them back up. The last series, we're gonna put all four together. Jab, hook, uppercut, knee. So this is all the ones we did already. So we throw our jab. And then we duck, hook. After the hook comes the uppercut. And then it's the knee. Boom. If you have a hard time with the knee, you can do a front snap kick instead. So it's jab, duck, hook, uppercut, knee. Or jab, duck, hook, uppercut, front kick. Both are good. Jab, my arm. Good and rest. Awesome. Okay, so that is just a combination that you can do. It's all combinations. Jab, cross, kick is a combination. They're just a way of building smooth motion, entertaining skills, right? I'm going to have a really fast jab. I'm going to have a really fast kick. And going jab, kick might be slow, and I need to be able to fix that. Everything has to move quickly. Okay, next thing. Pattern. Take a look at our time here. Well, we're perfectly on time. Pattern one. Now, first thing to remember, imagine you've got a clock and put it on the ground. 12 o'clock is towards me. Three o'clock is towards that side. Turning to six o'clock, turning to nine o'clock, and then back to me. Perfect, pattern one, jumpy, pass slap. Cross alone, I Close, cross, step out towards nine o'clock. Horse stance, walk and pull. One, reach, grab a piece off the shelf, slide on the ground, we're going to, to nine o'clock. Good, step and punch to nine. <clears throat> step and punch to nine, boom. Now reach, turn, throw that pizza. Kitty liver and dill pickle pizza, ew, chuck it. Now step towards three o'clock. Again, step to three. Boom. I from here, pat your back leg. You're gonna drag that leg. It should be your left leg. You're gonna drag it behind you to six o'clock, which should be directly away from the camera. Boom. Step and punch. Now pat that right, right left leg again. It's gonna spin to nine o'clock. Grab that pizza, chuck it. Load. Good. And then grab that pizza, step your close leg towards me, towards the 12 o'clock, throw that pizza. Then from there, step, hike, finish. That was awesome. Please remember to work your stances. A lot of us are kind of lazy on our stances, so we stay up high. Let's go through one more time, we'll go a little faster. Pattern one, jumpy, hands up, cross, I close, cross, horse stance, I nine o'clock, boom, step punch, step punch, I three, three o'clock, nose on the high back stance, step and punch, full stance, step and punch, I turning to six o'clock, step and punch, I turning to nine o'clock, boom, step and punch. From there, step and punch to the camera. I and finish. Sweet, shake your legs out. Grab a quick sleep if you need it, and then we're gonna move on because we're gonna go to fancy kicks. So, 
What I call a fancy kick is basically any kick that isn't one of our six basics. So a front snap kick is a basic kick, but a fake front snap kick choom, is a fancy kick. A point kick, basic kick. But a windmill point, fancy kick. Spinning hook kick, round fancy kick. So we're gonna work on our fancy kicks today. And we're gonna start off with a spinning hook kick, which is, ah, it seems scary. So here's how it works. Turn sideways, totally sideways. Point your belly button that way, two to three o'clock. Tap your leg that's farthest away from me. Now you're gonna lift it up and you're gonna turn butt first towards me. You wanna circle with your knee. So all you're doing is taking your back leg. A lot of us are here, no, not this one. Wave your far away hand. Tap that leg and stick it up behind you like that. Other leg, make sure it's the one that's farthest away from me. And then we're gonna go backwards with that leg in the air. So all I'm doing is lifting my leg up, and then I'm turning my back to you, and then I keep turning. Now it's really hard to go slow. So what you're gonna do is you take your, if your right leg is back, you're gonna kick with your right, and you're gonna turn to your right. Now your first step, as you notice, it's just me swinging my leg like a base, like a club. That's the start. The kick itself is a snap. But first, get turning backwards. So here I turn my butt, point your butt at the camera, and then swing your leg around. Let's see, turn sideways, spin that leg around. Now you want to be going heel first. So a lot of us are turning our belly button to the camera. Turn your back to the camera. And then swing that leg around. Okay, now we're into right, and this time you bring your leg flat, and you want to hold your foot like a sidekick. So I basically am going to make a big arm flat with a sidekick. Now you'll know you should be hitting with the back of your leg with your heel. If you hit with the front of your leg, you're turning the wrong way. So turn the leg backwards and hit with the heel. Okay? Turn the butt first. Turn the butt first. Shoo! And then try the other side. But first, shoo. And all you're doing is learning how to spin. Now, if you ever did dance, generally you pirouette forwards. This is backwards from dance. Turn your butt first, not your belly button. Good. So again, pick your leg, straight heel, other leg, boom, straight heel. And then just practice, shoo, nice and smooth. So this is technically a spinning heel, not a spinning hook. To make it a hook kick, you pull your foot to your bum halfway through. Turn, halfway, boom, pull my foot in. Halfway, boop. And then I start to whip my body around faster. Get that hook in. Now, if you don't have enough room in your house because you have a house, that's okay. Okay? Remember, you're trying to go backwards, boop, not forwards. Okay, so that's one kick. It's a hard one. Spinning hook kick takes some practice. That's why it's a red belt kick. So now, let's try, let's try, hmm, we're going to try a jump side kick. Now, here's how this works. I'm going to lift this knee, the knee I'm going to kick with. But as I lift it, I kick my other foot underneath. So I go, knee comes up, kick the other foot underneath. So I kick with the kicking leg. Try just lifting that knee and then kicking with it. Whoop, boom. So lift that knee and kick, boom. But as you lift, try to jump a little bit and kick. Yeah, use the knee lift to jump and kick. The easiest way to think of this is imagine you're a leprechaun. Whoop, click your heels. Now instead of clicking your heels like a leprechaun, you click one heel and you stick the other knee out. And that is a jump side kick. Good stuff. All right, guys. We're gonna finish our coaches or right now.
Nice and slow, standing here. Show, step with your left leg. Share it. Going in, bow. Like those are being kneeling down. You want to be in Seiza, which is normally knees quite close together. Your back should be straight. Just your chin goes down, not everything. Imagine you've got a string holding you up from the back of your head. You drop your chin, don't leave your elbows up like this. Let your elbows relax by your side. Chin down. Makdo Shijak. Makdo standing up. My chair is gone. Come here, chair. It's a high quality chair. Got it on sale. Okay, so I should say, Derek and I were talking about this recently, and most of you had this conversation with me, but it's kind of cool how much a person is like a car. We were talking about. Um, how the cylinders of the car inside your engine pull air in, and how certain, how our lungs, when we drop, when, our, when, we, when we breathe, we, we, our diaphragm opens up and it pulls air in. It doesn't just happen, it actually pulls the air in. And then we talked about um, a, how a car can be turbocharged by, by using something to push the air in instead of just pulling. And there's another thing we can do that with people, but that's not always a good thing. Okay, so let's cover it quickly. Um, in many ways, we are a biomechanical or bioelectric machine. Our brain, which is kind of like our computer or CPU, actually runs on electricity. I mean, technically it runs on sugar, but it creates an electrical uh, pathway between one neuron to another, and each pathway is a different memory or different experience or different thought. And so all the time, your brain is setting all these little electrical pathways alight with um, biochemical or bioelectric energy. So your brain uses electricity to work, which is crazy. Attached to your brain are nerves. Nerves are like the wires to your car. When I turn my turn signal on my car, there's a wire that runs from the turn signal to the light, and they go tch, 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 tch. And that's what that turn signal is. When I turn the turn signal, the lights turn on. The wire in between them, that's like your nerves. You have a, a wire that runs down your back, goes all the way to your big toe, and then when you say wiggle toe, you go wiggle toe and it falls that wire and goes doo -doo 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 -doo, wiggles that toe, right? We have an engine, which is our heart and lungs. So when you're working really hard, it's like a car going vroom, your heart and lungs start working harder to provide more oxygen. We have fuel lines. Car takes gas from the gas tank, which is our tummy, and it takes it to the, to the engine. In our case, it takes uh, food, part, not really food, they break it down to little tiny things, carries it to your heart, carries it to your whole body, right? Because all every single little cell in your body needs that food. So we have fuel lines, we have a fuel tank, oh, no, 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 no. we have an exhaust pipe, which you guys can probably figure out what that is. Um, we have a computer, we have a frame. And what that means is what makes the shape of a car are little metal posts. And in us, it's not metal, because that would be amazing. It's bone, and our bones make our shape. My cat has totally different bones than me. And then we have a, well, it's not exactly hydraulic, but it works kind of similarly. Um, a system for movement and for function, and that's our muscles. So in many ways, we act quite like a, a vehicle or like a, a robot. And we have one super special thing. We have a few super special things, right? One. If I crash my car, it doesn't heal on its own. If I stub my toe or I roll my ankle, it will heal. My car, if the wheel breaks, it doesn't heal, it just starts moving, okay? And the other thing is, my car or any computer or robot has to be told what to do. We have the real gift of being ourselves, of being able to um, express ourselves of our own volition. We don't need something to say, you must do it this way. If I ask you to draw a picture, every single one of you will draw me a different picture. And even if I gave you draw me a horse, 
every single one of you would draw a different horse, sometimes using different colors, different shapes, different patterns. Some of you have more skill, some of you have less skill. I have zero skill, so my horse looks like a duck with four feet. But it's all an expression of self. And that is what makes us really special. We're all kind of alike. We all have an input-output device, eyes and mouth. We, we can all interactively recognize and interact. Sometimes it's our ears, sometimes it's our touch, sometimes it's our sense of balance, right? We all have a whole bunch of senses. The common ones we talked about are five, but there's really like 40, right? Balance is a sense, for example. But what it comes down to is while we all have very similar functions as a, as a biological machine, what makes us really special is that each and every one of us interprets and express, interprets the world and expresses ourselves very differently, right? I like certain kinds of music, other people like other kinds of music. We all draw things, they all come out differently. And that, that's the real gift. It's not our similarities, which are really important, but it's the fact that we're all different, and that is awesome. Anyways, guys, thanks for a great class. Please put your hands together, face this way, and namaste. Awesome work.